What's up, Kansas City? I'm your host, Glenn Brian Frizzell. Today we are filming in Lawrence, Kansas. Our guest today has recently served as a screenwriter and as a co-executive producer on the new Spike Lee film, Chirac. Please welcome to the show, KU film professor, Kevin Wilmot. Good to be here, Glenn. Good to have you. Can you tell us a little bit about the Chirac story and how it got made? Sure. Well, I um, wrote a script uh, about 13 years ago called uh, Gotta Give It Up. Uh, based on the uh, Lysistrata um, play by Aristophanes, you know, ancient Greek play. That's in one of my old drama That's textbooks. Right. <laughs> right, exactly. And um, uh, and I just made the film CSA, Confederate States of America, and uh, Spike really liked that film, and uh, he became the presenter of that film. Mm -hmm. And so um, at that time he asked me if you have any other scripts, and I told him, you know, I told him about Got to Give It Up, and he read it really liked it. Now how did you get a script like that into Spike Lee's hands? I well really it was it, 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 it was it was really from our you know we shared the same agent at mm -hmm. that time and so when he saw CSA he really loved CSA and he became the presenter of it mm -hmm. and then at that time asked me if I had any other scripts he read gotta give it up then and we tried to get it made 13 years ago didn't quite happen and then um, he called me about a year and a half ago and said um, Still got that script? Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, I still got it. And uh, and he said, uh, let's set it in Chicago and call it Chirac. Now, he has some excellent star power. I've recently got a chance to uh, check the movie out. And uh, I like what I, I like the color scheme and I like the, the set design. It's set in Chicago, obviously. But the rhyme style, mm -hmm. I don't know if that was something that in, was in the original play, uh, but it rhymes. Parts of it, it has the urban Chicago uh, diction, as uh, slang, uh, word uses, as well as the rhyme style. Uh, why take your play, uh, your original screen, excuse me, your, your screen play? Your play, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, for lack of a better word, and set it in modern day Chicago. Well, I think uh, when I, the original uh, "Got to Give It Up" script had the verse in it as well, and I kept the verse because the original play by Aristophanes is in verse, and so one of the things that attracted me to the whole idea of, of turning it into a modern story was the verse, and I thought the verse really sounded like African American uh, speak, you know, and 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 so we just really embraced with the rap and spoken word and rhyming jokes, those kind of things. And uh, Spike really dug that as well. And um, so uh, that was that was always part of the concept of the film. But I think Spike wanted to specifically make a film that dealt with, you know, the problem of black home black crime in Chicago. I mean, it's a, it's an epidemic. I mean, the, the term Chirac comes from more African Americans, really, when you get it, when you get down to it for the, for the most part have died in Chicago than have died in Afghanistan and Iraq combined. Mm -hmm. And that's a really, really, really shocking statistic. I think that's notable because as uh, most of us Spike Lee fans would know, most of his movies are set on the East Coast in his hometown of New York, but this is set in Chicago and it addresses a specific problem, gun violence. Right. Now, what were you trying to come up with a solution? Um, well, I think the, the, the movie does have uh, several messages. Right, right. So I certainly, I think we wanted to respond to the problem in mm -hmm. some kind of way. And, and the, you know, Lissa Strada is about a sex strike, and women go on a sex strike to, you know, and to try to force their men, their boyfriends, their lovers, and so forth to uh, put down the guns. Uh, and I don't think we ever expected a, a sex strike to be the thing that would maybe in violence in Chicago or mm -hmm. in America is really an American problem, far bigger than Chicago. Mm -hmm. You know, Kansas City has had a lot of young people, children killed in this last year, which is really tragic. But I think we wanted to make a film that was more about solutions. Absolutely. You know, and not really about the problem. I think that we all know what the problem is in, in one way or another. And uh, to make another film about the problem you know, in some ways, ends up kind of glorifying people involved in the problem. And so we wanted to make a film about people that are trying to struggle with solutions to the problem. You know, uh, people who've lost loved ones from violence who are trying to find a response to that. You know, that's the thing that we are, we are far more interested in. And we do know that sex is power, and I've often thought, you know, well, uh, you know, 
it's women claiming their sexual power and their bodies and saying, no, we're not going to lay down until all this violence stops. We're not going to be responsible, as you say in the film, for creating life when so much life is being taken. I think that speaks wonders, you know, because women do have that choice. No doubt about it. And, and women are the same ones in the whole situation. And, and um, you know, I, I think that, you know, some yes, people indeed. would say we argue that, well, is this saying that women are only as powerful as their bodies? Not at all, because... I mean, the reality of it is we based you know, Lissa, the modern Lysistrata on uh, Lima Bowe, a uh, Liberian woman uh, from Africa who won a Nobel Peace Prize for launching a sex strike in Liberia that helped end the, uh, the conflict between Christians and Muslims there. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, there are sex strikes in South, South America. They, they want to get a road fixed. They can't get the road fixed. Women go on a sex strike, get the road fixed. The road gets fixed. And so, I'm sure it, it does. <laughs> so, so you know, it is a, it's a, it's a, it's one technique among many techniques to uh, to try to do something in, in response to the violence. And this sex strike uh, vibrates across the board. It's not just in one particular community. Now, you had on this particular film, uh, you're working with some outstanding actors and actresses. Uh, do you have any memorable, uh, what's the most memorable thing about working with uh, Angela Bassett or Jennifer Hudson or Nick Cannon? Sure. Well, you know, let's start, let's start with Nick. I think the great thing about the film for Nick is that when, uh, when Spike cast him, I think people kind of thought, well, Nick Cannon, he's kind of a, he's a kind of, kind of a nice guy image, you know, and he's kind of a, almost like a middle class image. That's what my ways. cousin said. Nick yeah. Cannon, a Chicago gangster rap. No, I think not. Yeah, and so there was a lot of, lot of, lot of negative naysayers out there, and and all the reviews have said how great Nick Cannon is in the film, and he's amazing in the film. And you know, the thing that I, I always try to remind people of, it's called acting. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you don't have to be a, a bad guy in real life to play a bad guy in a movie. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what's called acting. <laughs> you know, I mean, the whole thing is like, you know, the Hannibal Lecter guy. Does he have to be a cannibal to play a cannibal? I, I don't think so. So, so you know, that's the whole thing. And I think, I think in some ways it was kind of genius casting in terms of Spike's choice there because, um, you know, it sends a better positive message to have a guy smart guy like Nick Cannon who has made good choices in his life and uh, to play this this gangster character in the film you know it's not yeah you know, I think so often we kind of think that we have to you know we have to cast guys who've been involved in a life in some kind of way that they need to bring that to to the reality of it and that, and that ends up kind of glorifying the life in a way you know? now now for those of us who have personally have personal tragic stories about if, being affected by uh, gangster violence. What was it like working with Jennifer Hudson? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, the fact that, you know, people want to criticize the film and say, you know, somehow that we're making fun of, of um, you know, the victims of violence. I mean, yeah. you know, Jennifer lost her, her mother, her brother, and her nephew. And she would not be in a film that was, that was making light of anything close to the problem. Mm -hmm. And she loved the script. Um, I mean, she it took a lot of courage for her to play a part like this, you know, she plays the a mother who has lost a child to to violence, to a drive-by, and she had to go there emotionally. She had to go into all those places. I'm sure she doesn't like to go, mm -hmm. and she went there, and I think she does a an amazing job in the film. And Father Michael Pleasure played a role as an advisor on on, on this particular. Yes, movie. yeah. Well, you know, the film was really was really based in Saint Sabina Church in Chicago. I mean, that was where we did the auditions. Uh, it was really our, 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 our base camp for the film. And uh, Father Flager is just, uh, you know, he's an amazing, amazing man. I mean, he, you know, he has former gang members that work for him now that, that are peacekeepers that go out to the community and try to stop, you know, incidents from happening before they happen. Mm -hmm. You know, try to stop shootings, try to, you know, create peace. When guys hear about, um, you know, some retaliation that's going to take place, uh, these guys go out and try to talk to those guys. And in fact, one of the amazing stories, again, is one of the peacekeepers on the film that worked with us, his brother was killed while we were making the film. And uh, Spike, Spike had to pay for the funeral. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it just lets you know that, um, you know, the reality of, of the, the level of violence that's going on there. And, 
you know, the normality of it all, that people just kind of thought it was normal now, you know, that, that, that you know, it was, you know, tell you another quick story that um, there was, uh, that really symbolizes the whole Chirac term. Um, mother had two sons, uh, one was uh, living in Chicago, one was in the military going to Iraq. Uh, they're very worried about him going to Iraq. They send him to the airport, they're praying for him, send him off to Iraq. He goes to Iraq, his brother's killed in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So he's got to leave Iraq and come back home for his brother's funeral in Chicago. He's safer in Iraq than he was in it's Chicago. It's a war going out on, on the streets, man. It's a war going on. It's a war. It's, it's, a, it's a tragic, tragic thing. I, you know, I make light of it, but, you know, I, I visited Chicago recently, and I plan on going back. My mom's concerned, like, you know, you have your rental car, you, you're going to visit your cousins, and you think everything is fine, but you have to be, you know, cognizant that yes. you can't go down certain streets, you can't do certain things. Right. And that's a shame because it yes. hasn't always been like that. No. And, 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 and hopefully it won't stay like that. Yes. Now, I'm wearing my Morehouse gear. I'm not from <laughs> Morehouse, but um, I am a Spike Lee fan. What was it like working with Mr. Lee? I've read before he's a hard taskmaster. Is it true to that? Well, no, he's not a, he's not a hard taskmaster. I mean, he's, you know, Spike is a, is a working man though. He, you know, he's he's all business and he he gets the job done and and I like that and you know I try to be that same way, and uh, um, he was great working with him. He's very generous with me, uh, very inclusive. You know, I was with him on set for the entire film. Um, you know, we did little small rewrites during the whole filming of the film and. Um, you know, it was it was just really a pleasure. I mean, I see him as a friend and a colleague, and uh, um, and it's been a great experience. And why the Amazon Studio release? How did that come about? Well, you know, when you make a film like this, which is a different kind of movie, you know, we're doing a lot of things that are that are that break the rules of filmmaking Musical, here a little bit. It's got satire. music and you know, satire, the verse. Yeah, Samuel <laughs> Jackson. We can't we can't be neglected to mention him. Yeah, he's dressing the camera. He's dressing the camera, doing a lot of really cool stuff, I think. And uh, um, so it takes a it takes a hip company to kind of get that joke, and, uh, and they, know, got, they got the joke. They got the joke, and they they saw a reading we had in Los Angeles of the, of the script, and after they saw the reading, they went, we're in. And uh, so it really happened amazingly fast. I mean, Spike met with them in, um, uh, in, this, in January. We had a reading in February, and we were making the film in June. Now, the film's already up for several NAACP Image Awards, uh, including Best Supporting Actress, Angela Bassett, Jennifer Hudson, and Outstanding Independent Motion Picture. How does that feel? Feels great. I mean, you know, I think, you know, I think many ways it's a kind of a protest film in mm -hmm. a way. And you don't get to make those very often. I mean, they used to, back in the good old days in the 70s, you saw more of that. Uh, so it's, it's a rare thing when you get a, a big company behind a film that allows you to really kind of be entertaining on one level, but also really have a, a clear message about about things, and so it's great to see the NAACP acknowledge that. Now, talk about protesting. There are some student protests here, right here on the University of Kansas. How do you relate that to uh, independent filmmaking and 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 the uh, the gun violence that's going on in Chicago? Well, you know, I think uh, the and, and we neglect also mentioning the McDonald. You know, the uh, the. Uh, the calling of the uh, the police chiefs. Uh, oh yes, right. Yes, the firing. And, we, and we're probably going to have to do a second part to this. Sure. Well, yeah. I mean, what's what's great about um, you know, I think part of the impact of the film in some ways is that you know we we embrace the the, the uh, Black Lives Matter movement in the film. Mm -hmm. That's acknowledged in the film. Mm -hmm. um, and but the thing is, it's not a choice. We don't have to choose between being outraged and trying to do something about black on black crime and as opposed to the Black Lives Matter thing. I mean, they both are equally important. I get it. And, and that's the message that Spike wanted to send. I think that's the message we do send with the film. You know, I think that uh, the University of Missouri did a, um, you know, the students there have really kind of helped invigorate a lot of student act activism on campus now, which is, I think, is long overdue. You know, um, you know institutions have to be kind of maintained and have to be challenged on a regular basis, because they get become complacent, and uh, they over they overlook things. You know, they don't become as inclusive as they, they should be, and uh, I think that was certainly the case with the University of Missouri. I'm sure we have those same problems here at KU. 
Well, uh, Professor Wilmot, I'm going to conclude this interview. We're going to come back and we're going to talk to you uh, a little bit about your background and some of the movies that you did growing up. Uh, what's up, Kansas City? Uh, we urge you su to support Chirac. It is in your local film theaters right now. Uh, go online, find out what theater closest to you is playing, what time, and take your family members to see it. Certainly provoke a interesting conversation around the uh, dinner table. My name is Glenn Brian Frizzell. Check out more video online at www.whatsupkansascity.net. And remember, the sky's the limit. Aim high, shoot for the moon. If you miss, at the very least, you would have landed among the stars. Take care. Until next time. I'm Aya BB Bikini Pro Cat Williams, and when I'm not working out in the gym, I'm searching the web on Cascade Media and What's Up Kansas City. So make sure you check them out. <laughs>